All right, so before I get you guys to the uh, swap montage of this thing, I figured instead of putting music over it, um, I would give you guys a channel announcement. So let's get right into that. So I wanted to share with all of you guys, making these YouTube videos has been really fantastic. It's been fun. I've been, uh, actually as of just a couple days ago now, I've been a uh, technically a YouTube partner for a year now. Now, that doesn't mean I'm bringing home a ton of money. In fact, I've made about uh, just a little shy of $500 in the last year from YouTube revenue. Um, part of that is because there's just not a very big audience. And part of that is because you'll notice I turn off all of the ads except for the one at the beginning. Um, I hate having all those overlays. I hate having the ads that come in the middle of the videos. Um, I'm not even asking you guys if you guys want to be subjected to that because I don't want to. I'm not going to ever turn those on unless I absolutely have to because YouTube is making me do it. But more important than that $500, um, about two months ago, I quit my job as a software developer and I'm now doing Frankenstein Motorworks full time. And a big part of that is just because of how much this YouTube stuff has managed to get my name out there. Um, and of course, COVID has helped a lot. Um, COVID has really made people find their hobbies again. And one of their hobbies is building cars that they enjoy. Between that and the fact that my timing, you know, these 90s cars, you know, the whole Redwood effect and whatnot, it's prime timing. Everything just kind of came to a peak. Um, obviously it's a risk, you know, being a software engineer pays pretty well. And uh, there's pretty much always people that need software. So there's there's a risk there but uh my life has been much much happier for the last two months so i really hope we can keep this going um you'll have noticed that my video upload rate kind of bumped up a little bit that's just because i have more time in the day right i'm not spending 40 hours a week writing software for somebody else uh, i still write software occasionally like you've got uh, the body controller that i make for the mr2 spider but yeah at least for the time being, I'm not gonna be writing too much software anymore. Um, and frankly, good riddance. It's just way more stress than I signed up for. All of the neat things that I enjoyed with writing software, turns out they're not what people wanna pay for. So in summary, do expect to be seeing more of me. And of course, if we can grow this to the point where it can actually compete with Frankenstein Motorwork Income, then you'll see, start seeing even more videos. Uh, but for now, I'm pretty sure Frankenstein is gonna remain the primary income. And this instead will just be a way that I share what I do. Um, I know a lot of you out there will never be customers. A lot of you just enjoy seeing what I'm doing. But you know, if you ever hear about somebody that could use these parts, uh, please, please spread the word. I really appreciate it. It'll help me keep this going. Um, maybe someday the YouTube revenue will actually be big enough that I'll be able to do YouTube more primary and Frankenstein more secondary, but uh, I, have no plans for that right now. If it happens, it happens and we'll just kind of see what the future holds. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. So anyways, we've got this thing swapped now. So I guess it's time for a test drive, isn't it? through mental list of all the stuff that I bolted back on and I realized something super important I forgot to bolt the license plate back on so yeah uh, let's let's go back home let's go back home right now damn it well that was exciting <laughs> When I realized about halfway through that I forgot to attach the license plate on, um, well, that's when it became halfway through because I turned around and made it home as soon as I could. Um, thankfully, didn't end up with any issues. And there is registration on the car and I do have the paperwork in it, but I still don't want to have to have that conversation with a police officer. Um, 
anyways, the it doesn't matter that the ride got cut a little short because it still got us the data we needed. So there's a couple things. Um, first, let's talk about the airflow, right? We've talked about that on this channel before. Here's a graph. So you can see in blue, that's with the motor that's back there that we just removed, the 1ARFE with the cams. And then in orange, we can see what this is right now, which is the 2AR FXE double Atkinson version. Um, now, keep in mind, I said we were going to be making more power than the motor we took out, and the graph looks lower. But there's a few things you have to account for that. So first is whether the airflow is properly calibrated. It, it doesn't matter because both were done on the exact same ECU calibration, on the exact same hardware, MAF sensor, intake pipe, so that's all the same. They are good numbers to compare to each other. But remember, we bumped up the compression ratio from 10.0 to 12.5 to 1. So rough math on that is that's worth about 10% more power. Um, obviously, we have to prove it on the dyno. But if we take that graph again and bump the orange up by 10%, we can see 200 cc's less, but we're making the same power. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that our cams are flowing just as much air as they were before. So these FXE cams, even though they have a little bit less lift and a little bit less duration for what we were doing with this motor, we're still getting very similar amount of air. Now keep in mind, I said we were gonna get 10 to 20 horsepower more now, where I'm expecting that 10 to 20 horsepower more to come from is a little bit from the balance shafts that we removed. So there's going to be less friction in the motor. And then the other one is, well, it's wishful until we actually prove it. But my hope is that the reason that that power was dropping off so quickly with the other one was because the piston was running away from the flame front. Higher compression ratio means that we've got probably a better squish region, though I haven't taken one of these FXE motors apart. And if that's the case, then hopefully the flame can propagate a little bit faster, push on that piston a little bit more at slightly higher RPM. This is speculation, but we will find out shortly. Um, so that means that uh, Tanya here so far is giving us exactly what we're expecting from it, right? A little bit less airflow, but it's a 2.5 instead of a 2.7 liter motor. But the big if there was, are those FXE cams going to struggle to flow as much as the regrounds were? And because they are a little bit smaller. Um, and based on what I can tell, no, no, they're fine. And the advantage of that, uh, this thing idles so much better, so much better. Um, I'll actually put a clip at the end of this video. Uh, It'll get down to, just messing with it real quick, I was able to get it to idle comfortably at like 800 RPM. Um, I bet with just a little bit more tweaking, it'll actually comfortably do the 650 that it does from the factory. So that's, that's an advantage over the regrounds. And I wonder how much of that has to do with just the less duration at tiny bits of lift, because the tiny bits of lift matter less when you're at higher RPM, they matter more at lower RPM. So effectively this the cam we had before was larger at lower RPM than it was at higher RPM. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really excited. Um, now, one problem, one problem with this thing. When I first started it up, um, and actually, yeah, let's roll that clip. All right. We have violating... We have violated all the timing marks on this motor. Let's see if she starts, and let's see how hard she starts. Uh, now, there's air in the fuel lines, and I'm expecting it's going to kind of sputter to life, but it should start relatively easy. So as you can see there, I'm really confused what's going on because that motor is being loud. Now, let me start this up again here right now so you can hear that. So 
So I'm not sure if you could hear it or not, but it still did it for a few seconds. So I'm not sure if the intake phaser that I put on the exhaust side was damaged. Um, that came out of a junkyard motor. I have no idea. And unfortunately, that is one of the downsides with these AR motors is those intake phasers are a bit fragile. Um, so maybe that's the case and it wouldn't have any problems with a normal one. But essentially, this thing makes a little bit of noise until the ECU sees enough to say, oh, hey, the cams are here and then actuates that VVTI system. And because it's an intake on the exhaust side, first thing I have to do as soon as I find the cam is I have to retard it, sorry, advance it by 35 degrees so that it sits at its rest position uh, and it can actually idle down. So um, it's not nearly as loud as the 1AR that I'm pretty sure does have a damaged phaser in there. Um, so I will run it for the race and yeah, I'll probably bring a spare motor, probably bring a spare 2AR just, just in case. But um, yeah, I overall super happy super happy so now i just have to do everything else now i finally have to get the car prepped for gingerman um in uh late june so uh anyways hopefully finally i know i've said this for a couple of videos now but hopefully the next one will actually be the dyno video and we will put some proper numbers to this and uh yeah i'm excited so you guys have a good one we'll see you in the next one bye